Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Today, fall cleanup begins. We're dividing and transplanting one of our favorite shade perennials. And showing you how we collect seeds and save them. Welcome to our garden here in Zone 5B slash 6A, upstate New York. What we have right here is our Sun King Aurelia. And this is a great part sun, part shade to shade perennial for us. Check this out. This is just one perennial that gets the size of a medium sized shrub in it, just one season. And it has an outstanding chartreuse color that if we go in here, we can kind of see a little bit of the remnants of it. But if you look here, you can see it's already been bitten by the first frost of the season. And it's time to cut it back and we're going to divide it because we have some great ideas as to where these divisions can go. Whenever we're taking down large amounts of perennials, or in this case, just one large perennial, we tend to go for the hedge trimmer. This one, my fingers are crossed on. I'm hoping it's strong enough to make it through these branches. This hedge trimmer is really specifically for this purpose, so I'm not worried about actually cutting a hedge. Oh, Eric, this looks like trunks. I don't know if the hedge trimmer is, look at this. I don't know if it's going oh, to work. I bet it can. I bet it can get through that. All right, I'm gonna do this. Give it a go. And I'm gonna reach over here. Let's see what we got. My thinking is, is that if they grew that fast, they can't be that strong. Okay, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like they're not gonna be super dense, otherwise it wouldn't be able to grow so fast. It's my thinking. I gotta say, it has a very pleasant, fresh smell. It does smell very nice, the Sun King Aurelia. So that did pretty well, actually. Yeah, not bad. You know what, I, I didn't look under the canopy before we started filming, and I honestly just thought there would be more branches considering the foliage canopy. Yeah, it actually, it's a much smaller clump than I thought it was going to be. Look at those hellebores. All right, so we've got that cut back. Now we're going to divide it into four chunks. So it's going to get divided into quarters. So these roots grow outward just perfectly straight. They're so interesting. They don't kind of meander about the way a lot of other roots do. Do you see that, Eric? They're like straight out. <laughs> it's true. So, and there is a drip line right in front of it. Just gonna unearth this a little bit more. I kind of wanted to see what the root ball was going to look like before we started our process here. And so we have a choice when we divide this perennial. We can either dig it up and then divide it, or we can try and divide it while it's in the ground and then dig it up. What are you thinking? My thinking is we should dig this up assess it and then cut it. Okay. So I'm gonna get the big shovel first and pry this up out of the ground as one whole piece. Sorry, hellebores. There's a lot of hellebores hidden in this bed. <laughs> is it like real? I'm assuming it's like roots for days. This is gonna be was, really in there. Oh wait, there we go. This was planted in 2022. Careful of those hellebores. Wow, I see the whole earth lifting around it. Oh my goodness. Oh. White, wow, that's so strange. That's the interior of the roots. Wow. Okay, yeah. this right. is actually pretty heavy. This is pretty unbelievable. Look at this root ball on this. It's so big. I know, <laughs> it's so big. I'm gonna shake some of the dirt off of it. I'm thinking we'll divide it in four. Um, what I wanna look is to go between these stems that are sticking up. So I definitely think if I go right here, that's gonna be nice and in half. I have this root slayer. We got ours at Gardener Supply. <sighs> Thinking 
this will be the the ticket right here. Are you able to see right. that, Christopher? Yeah, right sort of down the middle between a bunch of the biggest If you stems. didn't want to step on it to divide it, you could get out a saw and cut it. I'm going to see how, which we might do. We don't know. We've never divided a Sun King Aurelia before, but let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. It's going to work. It went in pretty easy. Uh, it went into the top layer pretty easy. <laughs> This is a very tough plant. Okay. One cut done. The good thing with this root slayer is it's got nice little teeth on the sides. Yep. It sure does live up to its name. I think I've got it in half. Wonderful. I do. All right. It's currently divided in two. Next, we're going to divide it in half again. I'm thinking right here. Yep, I see that spot where you have a perfect little angle to insert. There you go. <laughs> really only one way to approach it. You just gotta hoist, heave, doesn't it seem terrible? It's so aggressive. But it's gonna be totally fine. Look at the roots on just this one chunk. It's amazing. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the creepiest root systems I've seen on the film. <laughs> and this one. Does it have a similar little spot to cut through? Uh, kind of. I think I'm gonna go right kind of at an angle there. Okay, that makes sense. Right here-ish. I do really love this plant though. It's so impressive. One of the great things about the Sun King is that it can take a little bit of sun, but you can put this in deep shade and get a really striking chartreuse color and get that really nice pop that is hard to get from other plants in the shade. We did it. Very good job. Four pieces. One of them is staying here. And now let me show you where I definitely know one of them is going. I'm gonna grab this chunk and the shovel. Now let's get this one in the ground. Follow me. We're going to the west side. A lot of this has been getting retooled and this is part of the retooling. Right here is where I'm picturing it. Right underneath the Shiloh Splash River Birch. To fill this spot that's gonna look so right? good yes there's already drip line here oh i forgot to wear um my knee pads and oh and you just got right down on the stones uh, boy didn't i ouch <laughs> and you'll have to excuse the shadows and sun this is uh this is what september looks like or i'm sorry october looks like it's gorgeous out and the sun is bright so that's going in there. The height of the crown matches what it was previously planted at. Very good. And this did have so many roots on it. I'm, I'm not worried about this taking at all. Oh, this will be so happy here because it's gonna be shaded by this beautiful Shiloh Splash River Birch, which I will say doesn't provide spectacular fall color, but it does provide spectacular <laughs> color all throughout the entire season. Yeah, I guess it does its foliage work throughout the year, so it doesn't have to do the foliage work in the fall. So this is all tucked in. Oh, this is going to look so good. And we need that bright chartreuse pop. And that's the thing is, these darker spots in the garden, really, I love adding a chartreuse pop to them. Because it really brightens them up. There we go. That'll get watered in and be settled. Let's go grab the other chunks. The other one I've been talking about in a couple of videos now, so I'm sure you all know where it's going. Let's and grab this chunkaroo. The creepy, creepy Look at those roots. It's so funny. And 
this one might have to dig a bigger hole. All right, so this is going here. In this spot, just out of the reach of that Empress Wu Hasta. You can see these perennials got cut back a little while ago. Now, the Sun King Aurelia, at its full maturity, will get the size that it was when we divided it. Mm -hmm. And the Empress Wu Hasta will also get larger. But I'm willing to put in the work and effort to maintain it throughout the season and maybe do a little Chelsea chop, maybe do a little like pruning away of some. It's that fine line between wanting a really, really full and lush look but then also being like, oh, that could be too close together. So we're going to experiment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how fast this gets to its full mature size. Yeah. You know, and it's still a good time for us to plant. We do tend to plant based off of six weeks before the ground freezes. And we did just have our first frost, so some stuff has been nipped. But the ground really isn't going to freeze here until probably just after Thanksgiving or into December and then then it wouldn't be so good to be planting but this will have enough time to maybe stretch its legs a little bit get a, a bit established at least it'll wake up in the spring a little dazed and confused but ready to go <laughs> say wait who are these people I don't know these people <laughs> where are my legs what is this geranium about <laughs> now let's get the last chunk that's being moved it's also a great way to save money, right? We didn't have to buy four Sun King Aurelias. We only had to buy one. Now this last chunk is going in a, a spot that I think it'll really thrive in. I do think it's going to be a great spot for this one. And it's a spot that we just kind of stumbled across this morning while do we were doing... you know the stats cleanup. on the Sun King Aurelia off the top of your head? I don't, but I am going to list those on the screen so that it's okay that we're both not remembering them right now. I know. <laughs> How epic will that chartreuse foliage be next to this purple? It's going to be so nice. And now, this back here is a grass, right? Yes, that is a Blackhawk's blue stem, which did grow very nicely, but we got to see how um, the difference in sunlight really can affect the color on a plant. The Blackhawks blue stem in full sun in the on the berm, that plant looks so radiant and regal purples and reds. And this was a little more muted. So I think this is going to be given a little bit more sun while also, um, you know, it'll give us some uh, fun texture somewhere else. I see you've decided to divide the Blackhawks blue stem. <laughs> yep. It is getting divided as well. Which also might be a trick for um, grass removal. Grass removal. Divide it as you're bringing it out. I do think part of transplanting and dividing perennials is getting over the fact that you have to really abuse <laughs> your plant to get it out of the ground. I know gla grasses They're are commitment. They're not going anywhere. They are in. <laughs> not much of a hole for you to dig for the Sun King. We might need to bring in soil. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like mostly roots is what you just pulled up. It's not even a ton of dirt. Yeah. What do you think? I think this is going to be so good here and it can get to its full size and it will uh, just thrive. My only design concern about putting it here is the foliage is a similar texture to this, but I as we previously discussed, these are probably not long. For I don't. Spot. Yeah, I don't have high hopes for that staying. Yeah. The other thing I did was I sprayed deer spray yesterday and it's as mm -hmm. fresh in the air right now. Cleaning out those hostas this morning, it was a... Uh was rough just knowing how much of that Bob X spray was now on me. Well, I didn't realize you were going to clean them out today. Otherwise, I wouldn't have sprayed them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm very excited about this location for these. Me too. It's going to be really nice. All right. Now, this one is going back home where it started. I also wonder if with Sun King Aurelia, it's one of those ones where, like, the chunks of roots will grow. <laughs> That's a good question because they do look, they're very ropey, I would describe them as. 
There's a bit of soil over here by the thalictrum to your left, Eric. Oh, yeah. These thalictrum we let go to seed, but I still cannot believe, again, another monster perennial. Got 12 feet tall these got this year. What a great little project done. So now we have to go through and water them all in. So we're gonna do a trio. I did just cut that second chunk Eric had into two. I'll place them right here in the green wall under the red fox Katsura. I think this will be a nice spot, Eric. It'll be nice. It's a good texture. There's already some grasses happening here. So I think repeating that texture will be nice. This red fox Katsura was just planted this spring. We had got it on our trip to Vermont at one of the gardener supply centers. And it's supposed to have amazing fall color and fall fragrance as the leaves get crushed. Yeah, as they degrade, they release malitol, some kind of sugar alcohol kind of smell. And it's supposed to smell like roasted marshmallows, right? Yes, I don't smell anything just yet. I think it's once they're on the ground. Oh. Like as you walk on them and crush them is when you get the scent. The other thing interesting over here is this little lime ricky stick that it's self-rooted. And lime ricky has been discontinued. It's a hydrangea. And because it's been discontinued, I felt comfortable just taking a rooted stick, a rooted cutting, and putting it in the ground. And I really hope it takes. Me too. It's a really pretty hydrangea. And you can't get it anymore. And normally the ideal time to divide and transplant grasses is the spring, but because it was sitting in a spot that we wanted to plant in, had we're just to go. Do it now. Because there's a lot of good guidelines in gardening, but you know, rules are made to be broken. It's fun to experiment in your own garden. Ah, oh, very important. I just found the uh, cable wire. Oh geez. Well, the Verizon Fios. I can't believe they don't bury it deeper. No, it is literally two inches under this ground. Is... Right here. Not wild. That is a terrible choice for Isaac. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this will give us beautiful fall color next year. You know how much we love Verbena bonariensis. We have lots of it. And we've been pulling it because it is officially going over as it cools. But this is a really good time to grab some seeds if you want to save them. However, if this is in your garden, there's a 99% chance that these have already dropped quite a few seeds. But if you see here, this is a really good specimen. This little spot here has actually completely dried. There's no more purple on it at all. But I'm gonna grab just a couple of them and then we are gonna go up on the terrace. And I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to collect some of these seeds. Follow me, Eric. I've got my little mini bouquet here. This is as easy as taking your little dried seed pod and tapping. And there you go. Probably the easiest seed you could possibly harvest from. And you can tell why there'll be no trouble with this reseeding itself in the garden if this is how much force it takes to take out seeds. And we have lots and lots of these blooms. So I'll gather some of these up. We'll slide them into one of these lovely brown seed envelopes. And that's it. And the reason that I would choose to save seeds knowing that they're going to be reseeding themselves so readily is maybe we want them in a new spot. And we just want to be able to plant some little seedlings I gather this up here. Delicately, of course. Helps to open your envelope before you start the paper folding. What's today's date? The 20th. Tis the season to clean up our annuals and we're just gonna kind of dig right in. Underneath this patio peach, this is our bonfire patio peach. 
We're going to leave this in the container for the season. I think next spring it's getting relocated maybe into the ground, right? I think it would be so nice to put in the ground. It Underneath it, we had planted Supertunia, Mini Vista Indigo. We had also planted Superbina, Sparkling Amethyst. <laughs> and Supertunia, Saffron Finch. I would repeat all of these. I think it was a really nice trio of plants. They all had a similar vigor. Um, I think that we are still learning about whether or not Superbina is great for us in our gardening space. But I think that as far as vigor and mixture goes, really pretty. It is a nice combination. So this is good to go. We will probably tuck it up underneath the covered area of the terrace yep. as it gets further into winter and we kind of bring in the cushions and cover the furniture and all of that stuff. Now these right here are the Moon Glow African Daisies, the Osteospernum. So pretty. Really pretty. Great performer. You can see they're not quite done for the season, but... We're done. As far as I'm concerned. They're done. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped watering these a while ago, so they'd be really light, as you can tell. So maybe this is one that I just take down here and dump. This one right here was my favorite new annual of the season that we've tried. It was Lavender Augusta Heliotrope. And it really did very well for us. Really impressed with that one. Love the color, love the leaves. Selenia yellow begonias, which I guess we could bring the begonias inside and try and overwinter them, right? I guess you can do that, I don't know. Well, we're not gonna. <laughs> I think if we were going to, we would have probably done that before they cut a frost. Yeah, I guess we didn't even think about it. Uh, but the Lavender Augusta Heliotrope was a nice, nice win for this season. And then, of course, more Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo. We are saying goodbye to these containers. This is our last season working with them. We love yeah. them. We do, but we decided to go with something a little more simple. Instead of having groupings of containers, we're going to get several large containers so we can condense our annual offerings. This container right here was Double Impatience. Wisteria? It was, the color was Wisteria. Was it? Rockapoco. Rockapoco Wisteria. Oh, it's going up in my face from the holes <laughs> in the bottom. These did very well for us this year. This was the best they've ever done for us. And they got very little direct light. They were kind of tucked in under the grill, basically. This was the Double Delight recipe from Proven Winners. It was um, Double Primrose Begonia, Double Apple Blossom Begonia, and then Large Blue Wave Terenia in here this one was rockin deep purple salvia with some more of the moon glow osteospernum and super tunia mini vista indigo coleus this was new lena war coleus this was new for 2025 mini me chartreuse coleus does much better in shade than it does in sun and then more super tunia mini vista indigo this is super tunia tiara blue right yep that's and coming out next year yes so let's get these all emptied. But before we do that, Christopher, let's head over here. Look at the double moon glow in these containers. Yeah, they're That's doing pretty beautiful. well. Beautiful. I know, but they gotta go. You're gonna go. Sorry. Blue moth at juniper also being put into the ground next year. Um, Super Junior Mini Vista Indigo right here. Super Junior Saffron Finch. Dark Knight Alyssum or Violet Knight Alyssum. Um, Violet Knight. Violet Knight Alyssum. And then this is our Meyer lemon tree. I'm debating what to do with it. We have to make a decision quick. I think it's gonna have to go in the guest room with a grow light on it, maybe? I think that's probably the plan. We also need a saucer that's big enough to go under it. <laughs> that's uh. also true, I didn't think of that. Um, but Christopher's gonna put the camera down and we are gonna empty all of this out, blow off the terrace and be done for the day.
that was quite a chore. Obviously, there's a few things to clean up, so I'm gonna get out the leaf blower, get the top of the terrace done, and Eric has to mow the lawn before we lose the light. I know, we have about an hour of sunlight left, and I'm gonna get this lawn mowed. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today as we transplanted perennials and saved some seed and did a bunch of cleanup. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Thanks for growing with us.